In this video, I'm going to review the properties of water and why water is so important for life on the planet. I'm going to give you a list of seven properties. The first properties are that water is adhesive and cohesive. Okay, and this part tells you that it sticks. Okay, so when something it is adhesive it sticks to something else okay so it sticks to other things and cohesive means it sticks to itself okay so if you say if you look at the a package of band-aids it says adhesive strips that means that they they stick to your skin tape is an adhesive because it sticks to things glue is an adhesive and then cohesive means things that stick to themselves. And water is quite unique in that property. And this is why these properties of water are so important for life on our planet is because they allow water. And I'm just going to draw a water as like a little ball. I'll show you the um, a better detail of it a little bit later. So that's one um, atom of or molecule of water. OK, so this is water H2O. So every time you see me draw a little circle, that's a, a molecule of water. And so I don't know if you've ever gone to like a fast food restaurant or whatever, and you get your, your drink from the drink fountain. And as soon as you put your straw into the, the cup, oh my goodness, the, the, you know, the pop rushes out the soda or however you say it. I say pop. But it comes out the cup and you're quickly trying to drink it. And this is actually what happens when water behaves using its adhesive and cohesive properties because um, you know the, the pop is made mostly out of water. And so the water actually takes its a trip up your straw, okay? And so it sticks to the side of the straw and then it sticks to each other to piggyback all the way up and water makes its way up to the top. And so for the planet, this is important in trees. Okay, so let's draw. I'll draw a little real fancy tree here. So here's the trunk of the tree, and here's the roots of the tree. And the roots are actually attached to little tubes that go up the tree. Okay, you'll you'll learn about this um, sometime uh, this year. So uh, the um, tissues that carry things up through the tree um, are called xylem. And xylem carries water. So when water goes into the roots, it gets carried up all the way up to the top. And we know that water has to be dropped off at different locations. But we really want the water to go to the leaves so that photosynthesis can occur. Because it's one of the reactants of photosynthesis is water. So this is how water gets up to the tree. So these properties of water, adhesive and cohesive, allow water molecules to travel up into trees. And we often call that capillary action. And so capillary action allows uh, water to travel from way down here in the ground all the way up into the leaves of the tree. The second property that you need to understand about water and why it's so important is that water expands when it freezes. And this is kind of a cool property. Now, I'm sure there is a few of you who have wanted a, a drink or something or a can of soda and it was warm. So you went and put it in the freezer and you forgot about it and it exploded and there was like, you know, frozen pop everywhere. And so this is uh, why that happens because soda, it's mostly water. It expands when it freezes. So usually, Here's here's a water molecule. So this is the oxygen and these are the two hydrogens. Okay, and so usually they um, are pretty happy just being like this. When water uh, freezes, it actually expands. So we normally, you know, um, let's say this is a person. It's a really great drawing of a person. Usually, what we do when we get cold is we we huddle up and get real small. 
and water does the opposite. Water goes, oh my goodness, I'm frozen, and spreads out. And that's so that's why water expands when it freezes. And uh, it's the only one that I know of that does that. So that's why it's kind of a cool thing. And why is that important? Well, the reason that um, it's important is because when lakes um, and rivers uh, get ice on them, the ice actually doesn't start to form at the bottom, okay? It doesn't freeze from the bottom. It actually freezes at the top because water expands when it freezes. And because it expands, it actually makes the ice less dense. So that's why it floats. And you can remember this by looking at your glass. If you put some ice in a glass of water, the ice does not sink to the bottom. It actually floats on top because the frozen water is less dense than the liquid water, okay? And that's the same thing that happens in lakes and um, places where, you know, they have winter, not here in Florida, which is where I am from. But you can... Um, Take a look and see that all of the uh, life in the lake can exist when the lake is frozen over and it's a wonderful property. So that's why that makes it important for life on the planet. The other property is that water um, exhibits what we call hydrogen bonding. And hydrogen bonding are super weak bonds. They're very weak, they're easily broken, but it's really important. So I'm going to draw a water molecule. And one of the things that water does is um, it behaves in a polar manner, which means that one part of it is slightly positive and one part of it is slightly negative. And the water molecules, because they have this, what we call polarity, the, um, the positively charged part of the water molecule will be sort of attracted with some kind of, um, I'm gonna draw this a little bit better. I'm gonna draw this like this. I'm gonna put the, the little mouse ears up there. So this part of the water molecule that's next to this one will be sort of attracted because you guys know opposites attract. So this attraction between um, adjacent water molecules is called, that's the hydrogen bond. I'm just going to put H bond. And so that is what keeps water together. And um, so this hydrogen bonding is a really important uh, facet. And this hydrogen bonding is sort of why it has uh, um, adhesive and cohesive properties and why it expands when it freezes. But for your sake, you just have to know that it exhibits a hydrogen bonding, which is weak bonds. The next um, concept that you have to understand is that water is polar, and I just talked about that. So it's polar, so that means it has poles, and that's what polar means. So a polar bear is at the, the North Pole. Um, so it has poles, and poles in science are oppositely charged ends. So if you remember, there's Two high, this is a hydrogen atom, this is a hydrogen atom, and this is an oxygen atom, which is why this water is called H2O. There's two H's and one O. And it's polar because this end is slightly positive and this end is slightly negative. And the reason that it's slightly positive over here and slightly negative over here is because this is a, a bond, it's called a covalent bond. And what it does is it sort of shares electrons in a cloud around the atoms. And hydrogen has one electron in its outer shell. So there's one electron here and there's one electron here. But oxygen actually has six electrons. And so if you take a look, the electrons are probably more likely to be over on this end of the molecule rather than this end. So this end is going to be slightly negative, okay? So that's why um, water is polar. And that's important for our next concept, which is water is called a universal solvent. And universal means like 
you know, pretty much everything because the universe is everything. Um, and water can dissolve pretty much everything. And it's so neat. If you look at the Grand Canyon, um, that's the Grand Canyon because of the um, water dissolved um, the rock over lots of, lots of time. But okay, so if we take a look, it's a universal solvent because of that polar characteristic. Okay, so we've got plus and minus here. Okay. Now, if I take something like salt, okay, that's uh, a salt uh, molecule. But when you put salt into water, it disappears. Okay, so you have a glass of water, you put salt in it, you can't tell that there's salt in it. And the reason that you can't tell is because it dissolves. And the cool thing about this is that sodium um, in its ionic form um, is slightly positive and chlorine is negative. And when you put salt into water, the chlorine goes to this end of the molecule and the sodium goes to this end of the molecule because opposites attract. So it can actually split the sodium chloride into solution. And this is the, the case for anything that is um, an ionic um, molecule or things that are polar molecules. So um, if, if you put a polar substance into a glass of water, it'll dissolve because um, it'll split up the, um, the particle ends or move them, orient them so that they dissolve. So that's water is a universal solvent. And this is super important because that's how you can transport things through your body and um, all kinds of um, great chemical things that go on. Um, the next one is that water has surface tension. Okay, surface tension. And surface just means like at the top, and tension means pulled tight. So if you think of a bowl of food that you have left over, and you put a piece of saran wrap over the top, it's got surface tension, so you can, you know, bounce things off of it and things like that. And that's the same as water. So let's say we have a lake and there's water across the lake. The cool thing about the water is it's actually a bunch of water molecules back together, and they actually sort of hold hands, okay? And because they're holding hands, this allows certain things like little water bugs and things like that to actually walk across the water. Um, this is my little water bug. I'm not a very good artist, but here's my little water bug. And he can walk across the water. Well, if you get a little bit heavier, you might break that little um, hydrogen bond in between the, the water molecules. Like You couldn't walk across the water because the hydrogen bond is very weak and wouldn't be able to uh, sustain your weight. But they could sustain um, a, you know, a small bug. Or if you have ever done this in um, like elementary school or even middle school, or maybe your teacher will let you do it now, if you take a glass of water and you put a paper clip on top, you can actually see the surface tension because the paper clip will stay on top of the water. Okay, the next one is it has a high heat capacity. Okay, so high heat capacity. And capacity just means how much it can hold. So we know that it can hold a lot of heat. That's what you have to understand from high heat capacity. Sometimes you might see this as a high specific heat. And that means the same thing. So water can hold a lot of heat. And this is really important for life on the planet because you think that the planet is mostly covered in water, like two thirds covered in water. So um, I'm going to draw my very very crappy continents here, and they don't really mean anything. But this is all water. And the sun is beating down on the planet 24-7. Even though you think it's not, it's always beating on the planet. If it's night in your um, part of the world, it's, you know, it's beating down on the other side. So if you think about the sun beating down on a pavement, you can't even walk across the pavement sometimes because it gets so hot. But water actually can absorb a lot of that heat without getting too hot. 
And this is one of the main reasons why life can be sustained on our planet, because we have water. Water allows to keep the planet cool. So it keeps us cool. We are very cool here on this planet. So hopefully that was uh, helpful to you to understand all of the properties of water and why water is so important for life on the planet.